All right, we're live. What song, what video game song do we use, <laughs> do we use today? Very Swedish. Um, yeah, let's do this one. If it plays, hello. There. Come. Oh, four people watching already. Please start with the questions. We're just playing a bit of music here for the intro. All these nice dances. Thanks, Joe. I prefer a question though. Bro, help me out. Stop the intro music. Okay, what's up? Hello and welcome to Uncommon Sense Live number nine. Soon hitting the two numbers of the stream. Cool. Please like and ask your questions in the chat and we'll have a nice stream going here. Um, okay, what's up, Joe? You were here before we started. Appreciate that. Please uh, lead, learn from this example Joe is setting. Um, so uh, he calls me Beefcake and says, and says Theo, okay, mm, mm. Uh, He has some question, but first, Gemini, Gemini, Gemini. What's your preferred form of cardio and how much do you do a week? Interesting question. I don't really do any cardio, like actual cardio. I just work out a shit ton, like many times a little mobility workout first and then the longer workout later in the day. And I'm on my feet almost the whole day. It's the nature of my job. You can see me, I'm standing here doing the stream for you too, but I walk and stand almost always. So I don't feel like it's su uh, super important for me to do cardio. Uh, I do get some cardio uh, like through the weight training, like doing deadlifts and squats and stuff. It will uh, ramp up the heart on intense sets too. Uh, so, but I'm thinking, you know, I am... Um, I take on one thing at a time. Like, so I started with the uh, strength and aesthetics, which kind of go hand in hand. If you're smart about it, do the power building style like I did. Then I've delved into mobility training, but I want to do start doing some kind of cardio. It's just that I need to figure out what I think works best to combine with the weightlifting. And so, because running, for instance, eh, I, I like it in theory. I, uh, running for me is something to do like spontaneously, just to, if I have anxiety, have a bad day, or if I just have excess energy and not really anything to do, I'll just go out for a run, but it's not something I do regular, uh, regularly because the impact from all the running that uh, creates like the micro tears in the muscle. And when you're training like for strength and muscle on a high level as I am, that could interfere. Of course, if you're just happy to be like, an, like you know, decently muscular and uh, have, want to have decent cardio of course there's nothing wrong with combining it so if i did like some kind of steady state cardio it would be low impact um like cycling uh, or or i guess a fucking cross trainer but i hate those those are so boring um but i actually i have tried doing like intervals of a deadlifting like doing eight sets of eight at a lower weight and just very short rest and I think something like that is what I like to do, or almost kind of CrossFit style workouts. But yeah, that, that's a little rant about cardio and what I do for it. Uh, like it's more important when you don't train as much overall to get some cardio in. But if you're like me, again, I, from the weight training, I'm gonna get uh, like elevated heart rate from some things. And I'm also on my feet like the whole day walking or standing. So it's not as important for me, but I will delve into it a bit more in the future. So, Joe Mad, it's a propose. You get the um, 2x, um, uh, you know. And then later, Theo, my question is, put in a less nebulous way. 
Did you get the intramuscular input in your arm that society is pushing, trying to put this question as innocently as possible? No, I did not. Uh, I can tell you my stance uh, on it as of right now. Um, well, first of all, I know that it's not about protecting us from some uh, big threats. That's the main agenda behind it, uh, either way. Uh, a lot of people talk like they know so much about these kind of things, but it's very, very complicated. And so they really just listen to experts, so-called. An expert, by the way, the def definition of an expert is someone that the media calls an expert, you know. Um, but um, I, I'm not convinced, though, because it's always when there is something shady going on, uh, there's always this group that goes like, oh, it, since it isn't like uh, they're telling us, it must be the complete opposite. This is super dangerous. Absolutely don't do it. And I just, what I clearly see, it, uh, they're using this, you know, to control us, to uh, decide what we, what rights we can have or and not have. And they, uh, they are actually trying to remove our right to, um, you know, have the final say on what we do, what gets in our body, you know. Um, but so... I, I, since in Sweden it's very cool, you, I don't. Uh, there's nothing I have to do it for, so I'll just um, stay put for as long as I can. But I could, if if I would conclude that I don't think it's dangerous for me, you know, I could do it for pragmatic reasons. But I'd still support everyone's right not to do it, uh, and it would just be like, yeah, I'll be fine taking this, but I don't really need it because I don't, you know. Um, but so that's kind of my stance. I, I won't have to even consider taking it for a long time. Uh, and hopefully, uh, like everything gets a bit clear until then. Very good job in the chat, everyone. Thank you for get, helping me getting the stream going so fast. Um, had more. Gemini Gemini. Have you ever considered high intensity cardio, like intervals or sprints? I heard that best for boosting hormones. Yes. Uh, if I did something like I, I sprints is fun. It's actually, you don't, as a grown up, you don't go running like as fast as you can that much. And I, that's something I've done spontaneously sometimes actually, but it takes such a toll on you. Like you can't do that too often, but maybe that would be a good thing for me, get in once or twice sprinting per week. But it is, if I did um, high intensity cardio, it would either be something with weights or sprinting, absolutely. And I'll stay and hit cardio for a short time maybe. Yeah, like we just talked about it, but yes, once or twice per week maybe. Oh, T. Miller. Hello, Theo. Hello, man. Uh, you, you're the guy that gave me input on my blood work. Um, yeah. And did a, almost did a complete one week fast along with me. Um, Gemini, and Gemini. Lo not long distance, short distances as fast as you can. Yeah. Uh, Carmen Rodriguez. Do you think most people live to work instead of work to live without realizing it? Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah, they do. Like, like my opinion is that kind of the middle class is the real slave class in a sense, you know, because <laughs> it, it's it's so horrible to see, to be honest. Because I I've been surrounded by these kinds of people always, you know, that they've got an into their head that uh, yeah, I need to go to school and then to the gymnasium and then to the university so I get a degree so I can get a job and and now now I can get the things I but I have to spend so much time and money and effort on things that aren't really what they want you know and uh, because they can get all these you know they have the fancy job title they wear the suit to the job they have the nice tv at home they can watch netflix they can eat their tacos on the friday they can go on vacation once or twice per year they have the nice iphone they now think they've made it you know but <laughs> they, they've just made it far enough to get all these things uh, to keep them happy so that they think that uh, they make it but they're stuck in the how do you say in english in the little wheel for the little hamster, you know, uh, kind of like that. Um, Gemini Gemini, I got the shot. It's no big deal. Good luck traveling without it. The mind control isn't in the shot. The mind, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. But I'm saying though, as long as I don't need to, like why, you know, um, I I'm open to it. I I've kind of changed my stance a little bit. I, I mean, I would very, very much prefer not to have to do it. And it's also this kind of thing, if we just go along with it, like, okay, I guess I can travel. And then they know. They just have to have the threat of removing something from us and they'll get us to do almost anything, you know. So I want as many people as possible to not take it, right? T. Miller, the intramuscular input is dangerous. No good comes from it. Uh, this guy is a doctor, by the way, just saying. Joe Matt. 
yes, Theo, you know, it's a giant scam. As more evidence is coming out, uh, gain of function, <laughs> an example, gain of function. It's really, really disgusting. Yes, you're 100% right, but I'll have to get it to keep my job. Only option is to live in the woods. Uh, yeah, and he asks Gemini Gemini, uh, which one you get? Um, and Gemini Gemini uh, uh, says, whether you are anti-redacted or not, there will be a redacted passport sooner or later in almost every country. Yeah, okay, and, and you're just fine with that then. Uh, wh what else can they tell you to do and just say you need uh, to do this to get the passport to travel? What else will you put up with? Can you please like the stream, guys? Well, more people have dropped in, so please like. It will help support the channel, help more people see it. Um, Joma, Gemini, the issue is that this is all fake, strictly for wealth and power. As a Christian, it's so wrong morally, why well, I will have to. Um, and Gemini Gemini, <laughs> and he also says, okay, Q. And Gemini Gemini says, you don't have to like it. Can't fight the government. Good luck trying. Yeah, yeah, that's the spirit. Just, just let the government do whatever they want to you. Joe, Matt, all communications go through big tech, liberal media controls everything. People cannot assemble. Guns are taken away. Pivotal movement in society. Truly disgusting of the world. Lol. Gemini, Gemini, do you pay taxes? You ask me if I pay taxes. Like, yes? Yes? And your point is what? I uh, can tell you now, when we run out of the chat for a little bit, I'm drinking Yule Must. It's a little early. <laughs> that means Christmas must. Uh, however you translate that, but uh, it's it's kind of an average out of beer and coke in the taste, sugar-free version, obviously. Love this. It, it supports my theory that the more like um, the more um, intense or like 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 crazy uh, a taste is, the the more better it translates to diet soda because there's more taste things to hide the artificial sweet taste. Mm. Gemini Gemini says, the government already tells you what to do. Taxes and laws are exactly that. Yeah. Yeah. And within reason, I think we, you know, the social contract uh, thing, uh, I think we all want to have it that way as long as things are run good and uh, our best interests are looked after. But if it goes too far, well, I wouldn't tell anyone to break the law or anything, of course, but I'm just asking, would you put up with exactly anything, uh, you know? You know, at Christmas, we need Krampus. The word is Krampus. What is that? Krampus. Krampus. Gemini, I understand, but it's wrong. Bottom line, I'll be saying this after I get it as well. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I think we're on the same page, Joe, on the situation. Okay, so it looks like the chat died out for a bit. Um, well, I can tell you a bit about my week. Oh, I was going to tell you some news on this stream. Uh, the guy who asked most about it isn't here. Uh, Bardos, right? Um, but okay, so it, it's an intense week. I'm having, you know, we always have these periods in life. I'm coming off like the just super breezy, uh, like everything just going my way, everything uh, feels good and is happening good. And now, like, it's all it's symbolic in Sweden with the winter, it gets cold and dark. Um, but also, I just have so many things going on, like things that are difficult for me that I'll need to learn to handle. Um, there's a lot of attract, don't chase going on right now. And not even that, by the way, just like <sighs> wait for things to play out. My uh, family got some pretty horrific news at the end of this week. And I'm getting a lot of practice in being stoic, you could say the least. But one thing that like contributes to stress, but it's a very positive thing is, as you know, I work as a personal trainer in a gym, like physically, but I'm also a on an online coach. And so I've gotten a new job uh, with my personal training. And it's not a secret where it is. It's just that it has nothing to do with this channel. So, you know, if someone found out where it is, that wouldn't be a big deal. But I won't just go out saying it. But let's just say it's in a very fancy place. And so the pay is uh, like, basically, as long as you're not com completely self-employed, you can't get better pay as a personal trainer than in this place. Uh, and also, it's kind of cool because you're not like actually employed. It's like franchise. So... I get to learn more about uh, my company that I'm starting right now. And um, yeah, so it's both the actual job. Uh, it's cool, but also for my like career uh, or like where I want to take my life and my work um, in general. It's a big thing. So that's pretty cool. Um, 
let's see Joe at Krampus is the evil Santa from Norwegian folklore okay never heard uh, of him Santa comes for the nice kids Rampus or Krampus I think it was is a scary demonic creature to scare the kids who were naughty all year he's like the tough love Santa from Norwegian folklore which has been cancelled by fam society and he also says congrats on the new job and opportunities and wishing you well with a hardship thanks man appreciate that a lot Hanna Wallsten, uh, Chiana, by the way, or you, you said something, heard her up too. She says, congrats, cool, and a smiley face. Thanks a lot, Hanna. Gemini Gemini. Um, I mean, my best friend is a nurse in the COVID ward. It's mostly uh, unhealthy people, but they are all unredacted. If you are unhealthy, it's probably worth the jab. Yeah, yeah maybe. You know, that, that's the thing that I won't claim to know. Like, people who are... Uh, for it or against it, so many days. Uh, I made a video about this to, uh, recently. I don't know where it's going to come out, but so many people, they have just outsourced their thinking and, and they think, you know, it's coming from this source, so it must be true, you know, and, and they'll claim to know that it's like a miracle and we just save everyone or that it will just kill everyone. And I'm like, how the fuck do you know this? This is super complicated things. Like, how can you, you're just a little person reading the paper and you think you know so much. Ridiculous, ridiculous. Gemini Gemini says, Theo doesn't need it since he is the pinnacle of health. But most people aren't. Well, I appreciate that comment. Um, uh, but I, I don't think most people need it anyway. You know, God gave you an immune system, like use that. Um, but yeah, I mean, and also like most people aren't the pinnacle of health, so they could have use for it. Like maybe they should become more closer to the pinnacle of health. Maybe they should start eating better. Maybe they start, should start moving more. Maybe they should get sunlight. Maybe they should take some cold showers in the morning and boom, they don't need to take that. Hannah Wallstein, Chena, have you read Martina's book yet? I'm ashamed to say I have not, as you know, <laughs> I don't read much. I, I started reading it. I like the reading style. Uh, I mean, a writing style. I have not read it. It's so much things going on. I, I, get, I, I could find time to do it in the morning, probably. Um, yeah, but I, ha I have not read it more yet, unfortunately. Just like the first chapter. I like the, I like the style, though. Uh, I, I don't like when things are overly complicated, and it's a nice tone. And you can hear Martina's uh, voice talking to you in the book. Um, Joe Matt, every death is a morbidly obese person. You see their pics in the news, but the media never mentions it because that's fat shaming, disgusting. Yeah, I think I talked about that on a stream where they interviewed some like huge, huge fat person lying there uh, in the hospital. Um, and it says like perfectly healthy, young person, blah, 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 something. And this person just was to tell everyone to do take that, do take that redacted, do take it. You take it, and not a word was mentioned about the obesity. Anamalstein, we don't know what this will do with our immune system. I will never take it. They can fire me for all I care. Yeah, well, fist bump uh, on your like um, position there. Uh, I, like I said, I kind of agree, but if I come to the conclusion that it probably won't do me anything bad, I could do it for pragmatic reasons if I need to travel or something, but I would still support everyone's right to not do it, and I would prefer not to do it. So. Yeah, kind of my stance. And I won't have, again, it will, it will be some time before I even have to consider it, taking it. So please like the stream, guys. See people come and go. So drop your like before you drop out, <laughs> please. Um, T. Muller. By the way, Theo, my toddlers are now eating raw liver the way you showed me in a video with homemade yogurt. They used to eat it raw since five or six months, and now they do it your way. That way they eat more. Awesome, man. That I'm happy to hear it. I, I love that, uh, like... But both the thing I do with um, yogurt, kefir, protein powder, honey stuff, uh, and berries. So many have asked me for that and come and told me that, yeah, I eat that for breakfast now. But also a lot of people, like Hanna here, she, she liked it for eating the raw liver too. So that's great. I just kind of, you know, it, it's not something I put much effort in. I was making my breakfast like, eh, why don't, why don't just film and talk about it a bit? So that, that's awesome. The liver is freaking awesome. B, what's up? Good to see you here again. Hey, Theo, I'm uh, 50 minutes late. Hope I didn't get miss your big announcement, lol. I'm actually kind of sick at the moment. Some sort of uh, cold flu, maybe redacted. Uh, well, the, the big the big uh, announcement was that um, I got a new, uh, like I am the online coach and I have the job in the gym and I'm switching gyms to a very, very fancy gym that uh, there's great pay 
uh, but also it's cool because it's gonna force me you you're not employed you have like a franchise agreement and you you're your own like the customers pay uh, the gym and you send the invoice to the gym so it's gonna uh, make me learn more about that so i'm very excited about it um, like mainly for this reason to be honest to it's very cool that I can like level up my job, but also kind of my personal own thing at the same time. Uh, so, so B, that, that's the news that I got a, a very, very nice personal training job. Um, Joe, Matt, there are treatments available since the beginning, which work 100%. They were suppressed by the media to maintain the narrative, and many people have died who would have lived with the treatments, maybe. But they don't care. What's one life, right? We have a global plot to execute. Hmm? Well, maybe. Gemini Gemini, they probably will fire you, Hannah. Companies don't want to hire legal liabilities. Again, like it or not, that is the reality. Well, I know in Sweden, they could, I think, according to the law, they can say no uh, to someone that hasn't done this, you know, uh, to employ them, but they can't fire someone um, for not having done that. So, yeah. And I don't know if they could ask to see this fucking passport or whatever, but you could always just lie, you know, otherwise. Not telling you to lie, of course. Of course not. Um, Joe Matt, Theo, have you read the book The Rational Male? No, a few people have asked me on the stream. I, I like to just be rational, a rational male on my own and don't read too much. Um, but, but I could, you know. I, <laughs> Uh, I'm going to, I think I'm going to do, yes, seven likes and seven uh, people watching. Awesome. Um, I, um, yeah, I think I need to make a compilation of all the questions about books because my answer is like always, no, I have no, I have no tips with books. No, I haven't read that book. I don't like books. T. Miller, deaths are directly related to their insulin resistance status for sure. Yes. Gemini Gemini, remember that time you guys got polio? You don't, since we literally redacted it out of existence. Same for smallpox. Yeah, always, uh, because uh, all, all those things are the same, you know. Um, it, it's not about this specific thing people have a problem with. It's with everything, you know. Joe Mad, it seems there is a one in thousand chance of something going wrong when you cut through the media b bullshit. So I have a 99.9% .9 of being okay. I'm not a gambler, though. What? The? Well, yeah. Uh, yeah, are you really going to take those odds, Joe? There is a chance. Hannah Wallstein, Gemini Gemini, not very likely in Sweden, but I will find another way of surviving if they do. I will not let anyone decide what I do with my body. Awesome. I love you, Hannah. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, like, yeah, I, 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 I'm not worried about that at all because I know you, you have to be, don't, don't be so fucking dependent on a job, you know? Like, I'm not saying that it's the wrong thing for everyone to be employed. Like, it's just... Uh, not not a way for me personally, but you have to have some fucking skill that you can offer outside of being employed to someone. Like I could always get by with some online coaching and online poker. To be honest, it's it's just not what I want to. I wouldn't prefer to put most of my. I like it like now. I play every here and there, you know. But I could if I needed to. Uh, so yeah, like you have to be able to be self sufficient, independent. Uh, even when you like choose to be employed or something, you have to know that you, that could just go away. And what are you going to do then? You know, can't be dependent on uh, employment. You know, Gemini, Gemini. Hopefully not. Companies are avoiding non-redacted people in the U.S. like the plague. Pun intended. Yeah, that's a good one. Hanavalstein. <laughs> this is not a uh, redacted like the one for polio. You can still get the redacted and spread it. <laughs> I work in an American company, so we'll see. American owned, that is. Sweden law still apply, luckily. Yeah, that's good. Joe Mad, Gemini, you've been drinking the Kool Aid. <laughs> Chill out, lol. We all love science here. A free thinking individual is not a liability, lol. Yeah. Joe Mad, rational male is a red pill Bible about relationships between the genders. It's truly life changing. You see so many principles in there that are in Christianity as well. It's amazing. Well, that sounds intriguing. Um, I don't have anything to write it down on, but I, I'll look up the book, at least, to some summary or something. How about that? Brett M., what's up? How come we've never been able to eradicate the flu? Same reason you won't get the zero cases with redacted. Endemic now. Human animal vectors could redacted literally everyone, and it would still not go away. Yeah. Gemini, Gemini, Gemini. yeah, but the redacted helps for the flu too. That's why you can get them everywhere. 
Uh, okay. Well, I, I don't know. Like, I, I'd be happy to leave this discussion, you know. Like, um, uh, I'm not changing my view on the whole thing. Uh, and I think I have a very reasonable view. I don't need it. I don't want it. I'll avoid it for as long as I can. If I could see a reason that I'd had to, uh, you know, do a compromise, uh, I do that only when I feel very confident that it won't have a negative effect on me. As of today, I don't know. That's my stance. Yeah. So um, <laughs> do we have anything else in the chat? Like, ask me about the Yule Must or something. I don't know. I am... I don't have many stories queued up now, and we kind of got into one topic here. Um, Brett, that's not the point, Jomad says. It's really about the QR code, sort of like the Chinese social credit system. But yeah, hot topic, yeah, kind of. Anna Wallstein, curious why you think keto is not good for males. Um, I don't think I've said specifically for males. Um, look, like it, it's the... It's funny because I recorded a video just before this about just use your own common sense when I talk because I don't know all the details to how the keto will uh, affect the body. Uh, but to me, first of all, it just doesn't seem natural to never eat carbs. Like, yes, most people eat too much carbs and the wrong kinds of carbs. But um, to eat so little carbs is just not natural. And to me, it seems like it's important for the thyroid, for hormone production, whether you're a man or a woman, maybe it will affect women more. But so I just don't think anyone should be keto long term. And like you should do periods of carb cycling then, like either longer periods um, of either one, you know, or get in. Uh, I don't know because I've never done it. I've never looked into the de details, but a few days with carbs in the week or something like that. I just think it seems unnatural. It seems to, I've seen some blood work from people on the carnivore and keto diet where some hormones seem to be shut down, like testosterone even. Like they often have high testosterone, the guys on the carnivore diet, but they have very, very low free testosterone. Why that is, I don't know exactly. I, it's just an observation and I, I wouldn't recommend anyone to be a keto long term. Um, T. Miller asks, do you read the Bible, Theo? I don't. Uh, I probably should at some point. Um, but, you know, I'm all about, like, the, the Bible. Lots of truth in there I already have in here, you know. Uh, the Word of God is written on your heart, not in a book, really. The book could guide you. And since I feel like I have a relationship to God already, it just doesn't seem all that important. Like, I could do it. But it, it's almost, like, more out of interest. And I get some perspective. And I'm sure I could learn something from it. I'm not saying I know better than the Bible, you know. It's just, again, reading. Just reading all the time. <laughs> like... Uh, truth can be reached just by doing the inner work, going on the spiritual journey. You just don't have to read all the time, you know? Um, Joe Mad, Theo, I do like keto slash low-carb meal prep. Do you have any go-to meal prep recipes, like super simple stuff that goes down quick, but it's somewhat tasty to you as well? Well, um, <laughs> like uh, over 50% of my meals are literally rice, beef, uh, a carrot and a glass of orange juice with pulp. That's my go-to recipe. Uh, I don't even think about meals. I think about food. You know, I eat food. Um, I, I, I'm lucky to be able to eat this boring, but that's why, you know, when I do the coaching with people, I, I don't never do cookie, cookie cutter, like food schedules, as we call them in Swedish, you know. Uh, I am I always talk to that person about how do you eat right now? And those foods you know that are healthy, which ones are those that you like? And like, can you think of a few meals that you could? And I help them figure it out like that. So I don't really have good um, uh, advice like that because I eat so simply myself. And I know most people, uh, like that's too boring for them. And I don't want to push it on anyone. But yeah, my, my go-to meal is like rice, beef, a carrot, orange juice, boom. Uh, um beyond my wonder agreed of course we should eat carbs we need them yeah like like most people should probably eat lower carb than they do but we should eat some carbs and especially people that work out a lot should actually can actually use a decent amount of carbs you know 
Tim Miller says, very true. I found it helps sometimes uh, to read the Bible. Yeah, I, nothing wrong with it, of course, uh, as long as you don't get all stuck in that and quote the Bible the whole time instead of just speaking the truth as it is and speaking your heart and mind. You have to refer to the Bible all the time. I don't think you're like that, though, Mr. Miller. Joe Mad. I don't read the Bible, but I watch the Jordan Peterson biblical lectures. Mind-blowing. Yeah. <laughs> also says, oh, my God, alpha diet. Yeah, I, I guess it is kind of alpha. Um, Hannah Wallstein, we don't per definition need carbs. The liver creates the glycogen we need. I can agree it's not optimal long term, but definitely low carb. Uh, sure. Uh, and I know uh, I know we don't need the carbs like that. Like they always say it like that. It's essential. It's the fuel that the brain runs on. But it's we have gluconeogenesis. You know, we can create the glucose from fat uh, and protein, you know. Uh, but um, it seems like the thyroid needs external um, uh, carbs to be stimulated. I don't know any details to that. I'll be honest. It's just what I picked up on listening to people I uh, trust. And uh, from my own experience, like, uh, yeah, I, I remember I've been on keto for almost half a year once. And I felt kind of shut down uh, at the end. Um yeah, that, that's that's what I have to say about that. Joe Matt, eating bore, boring robotic utilitarian meals is amazing, liberating. Yeah, I love it. You know, it's because I've changed the way I think about food. I don't think about it mainly like, oh, now I'm going to get some nice taste in my mouth. I'm thinking about it. Yes, this fucking awesome machine I built. I'm going to keep it awesome. I'm going to make it more awesome. I put the awesome fuel in it. And, um, you know, uh, also... When you've resynthesized your reward system and your taste buds, you know, good, I buy good quality meat from a butcher, you know, and it tastes a lot to me. I love, I, I'm not even that bored with the food. Um, it, it's just kind of, if I have to, if I'm on a bulk and I kind of have to force feed a little bit, yeah, then maybe. But I, I enjoy it. I enjoy it. T. Miller's steak tartare with fruit is a fast meal. Yeah, that, that's a good one. Uh, steak tartare, that, that's like a raw steak with a... Uh, egg yolk on it, right? Joe Matt, when I think of carbs, I think anything that's in the middle aisles at the grocery store, overprocessed, then supplemented with corn syrup. I eat carbs from natural sources, but track the macros, etc. Yeah, yeah, like rice, potatoes, fruit, those are good carbs, in my opinion. You know, it was a little controversial opinion on the sugar that I have seen carnivore Aurelius do too, if you know that guy. And he goes, he goes much further into the science than me. But I've always been thinking, like, sugar can't be all that bad. Like, why does it taste so nice for us then? It does not make sense. It does not make sense. And then it's different, of course, if you talk about super processed candy or something. But it doesn't make sense that it tastes so good to us. And I know uh, after my workouts, I, I long for my orange juice so much. But uh, since I don't, I'm not addicted, I, I always um, I stop at a reasonable amount, like, uh, n never more than three deciliter at once, you know. So I think, uh, you know, the right kind of sugar and the right amount is really good for you. Like, why would it taste so nice? Otherwise, it does not make sense at all. Respect, Joe Mad says. Yeah, it switches the priorities, the systems. Tartar reminds me the Mr. Bean of the Mr. Bean sketch. But I hear it's amazing if with good quality fresh beef. Yeah. Um, switches the priorities. Yes. Yes. Purpose over pleasure. Purpose over pleasure. Purpose over pleasure. And then, of course, I, I can give you my little take on the, the pleasure and purpose. Like pleasure, for the sake of pleasure, is purposeful sometimes. Because, you know, you don't have to be productive and 100% textbook perfect the whole time because you can't. You, you need downtime. You need something to relax. And sometimes... Um, it's productive to enjoy a little bit of pleasure so that you can keep being productive and do the purposeful thing, right? So the good example is not for me because I don't like drinking much at all, but some guy that works hard, you know, it's a decent diet, and exercises regularly, but he's stressed from work. Then like once or twice per week, grabbing a couple of glasses of alcohol with a friend, like, yeah, technically that alcohol is not good for you, but maybe the overall effect is good for him because he gets to relax and wind down. And now he has the, you know, he, he's winded down, he's not as stressed, and now he has the output to keep being productive again. But it, it's like, you know, people say the 80-20 rule with these things. I think it's more like the 97-3 rule. 3% 3 pleasure, 97% purpose. 
T. Miller, that Mr. Bean sketch is funny as fuck. I remember that. He hides the tartar everywhere. I don't, I don't uh, know the sketch. Joe Med, I think historically we did not have access to sugar in abundance in our natural habitat, etc. Yeah, right. So we just ate some fruit and probably hard for us to eat as much sugar as some people eat daily nowadays. Hannah Malstein, I follow Car Carnivore Aurelius. Probably it tastes nice to get us to avoid starvation way back. Now we're not really at the risk of starving. A small amount is not that bad though. No, the small amount is what I preach. Like I have my orange juice with most meals and that, that's most of my sugar, you know. Jomed, Theo, do they have shawarma in Sweden? I don't know what that is. Maybe I can look it up real quick. Shawarma. Uh, hello. Shawarma seems like a place. Ah, uh, is this some kind of burger place or uh, a variant of kebab where the meat is cut in thin stripes and served in a bread roll with good, good <laughs> accessories. I'm trying to translate this from Swedish as I go. Accessories, you don't say with food, but um, no, I've never heard of that. I don't know. We have kebab, a lot of kebab, yeah, but. Joe, that first sip of alcohol is amazing. You feel the calmness flooding your body after a stressful day. But beyond that, the more I have, the more I feel like it's poisoning me, which is, it is. It's not. So not super into it. Um, no, nah, nah, like, like I've come that far that, you know, I do drink just a tiny bit sometimes. Uh, I do. I know what you're talking about. What I prefer to drink is hard liquor, like whiskey or vodka or champagne, sparkling wine. And the sparkling wine, you know, when I drink it, it goes so fast into your head, and it's a nice little light-headed feeling. But I don't. Most of the time, I don't feel like I need it, you know. And when I don't drink anymore, that, that it goes out of me so fast, and then I just end up getting really sleepy, which no no one else gets because they keep drinking, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, I know. It, it's the um, that's horrible cycle that some people have when they drink, like I did, you know, because you're looking again, you're probably not happy in your life all over, and now yes, it's like the drink, you know, it's fun. Um, and yeah, the only thing you can uh, think of to make it more fun is have another drink, have another drink, have another drink. And if you're like me, then you're not the guy that just sits at home and drinking every day. But when you do, there's just no stop button. You, 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 the reason is my glass is empty. I fill it up and you keep do going like that till you black out or pass out or something. Shawarma is like Lebanese food, falafel, etc., like a wrap. Yeah, I got it. Uh, yeah, it's like a kebab. Oh, good. Just wondering. Yeah, I mean, you never know. So sometimes different things are called, they have different names in different places. So maybe we have it, but I've never heard that uh, uh, that, that um, word. Joe, yeah, I never had a face of going extra hard on that stuff. I respect the people who did and overcame it. Someone else typed something. Yeah, come on, help Joe out. He's helping me out a lot, but he doesn't want to be flooding the chat by himself. Um, yeah, so you respect people who did and overcame it. Yeah, well, that's me then. Um, like, like part of me with, with those things, uh, you know, uh, you can always, when you go, well, I wish I didn't do that. But on the other hand, it's going through all of that that gave me the perspective that I have now. Why I, I feel so, I, I'm not like it's easy for me to stay away from alcohol. Like I genuinely don't want it most times. Like, um it's so funny because it's so when you're in that I remember I used to be the guy like I asked the guy in my choir once like genuinely like why don't you drink I, I don't understand it's fun uh, you know uh, like why don't you do it and I, when whatever he said I, I was like of course because I did not ask to know really uh, I was just uh, in awe really um but uh, <laughs> I know very well now you know it's when you live in that horrible reality that um you have to have external things to be happy and don't realize that you can be happy on your own, you know? Uh, shawarma is Lebanese. Kebab is Pakistani, I think. The difference is along those lines. Respect to the cultures of the world. Sure. Hanamal Stan, if men knew how low the testosterone gets when they drink, you would probably avoid it. Their testosterone. Excuse my English. No, that's fine, Hannah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, absolutely. Like... I think about it sometimes, like they can apparently a lot of them still function and have sex and stuff, but I know how badly it affects testosterone, you know, 
would be interesting to see what my testosterone was like four years ago because it's very high now um yeah yeah and especially beer you know beer the manly drink the least manly drink that um yeah the, 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 yeah there is and to think i used to love this shit i, I even went the few times i've tasted beer now and i kind of look forward to it like yeah I, I used to like it so much i'm like what did i like and then you kind of realize that hey maybe i didn't like it all that much uh, like it's not disgusting to me but I, I just don't enjoy it as much because it probably was a connection you know i drink the 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 beer i get funny and confident and relaxed Ooh, that, that kind of thing joe mad to know what i need a woman what the to know that i need a woman uh what wh what do you mean to know that i need a woman uh, and hannibal says lol joe mad hope you find someone and a cute smiley face that's nice of you um joe mad had my testo checked came back fine alpha bloodstream <laughs> hannah no she would destroy me i don't need a woman but thank you no, it's not about needing a woman, but I think all of us men would like to meet uh, a fantastic woman, right? Um, but, but yeah, that, that's the thing. Attract, don't chase. Um, if you if you need a woman, you're going to look for her. You, you both come off desperate, have lower vibes, but also you'll probably force something uh, that, that wasn't for you really because you, you really want a woman and then you can, you're you blind to the fact that maybe this wasn't the right for you. So you shouldn't need the woman, but there's nothing wrong, of course, to want the woman. Um, Lol, to know that I have low testo, I need a woman to test it out with. <laughs> uh, all good. Jomad, yes, not forcing it, not willing to compromise my principles. Good on you, bro. That's the way to go. Attract, don't chase. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Having a sip, Vjulmust here. Um, <laughs> Marvin Brown, you are great. Greece from Germany. Ah, oh, thank you. Um, guten Tag. Uh, do you, do you, Mar Marvin, do you have any question or something you want me to talk about? Because we're running out here a little bit. Joe Mad is doing a great job of pulling the stream for me here in the chat. But please help us out here. Um, but I appreciate uh, your feedback there. Hannah Wallstein, the problem is relationships are most of the time dysfunctional nowadays because people lack values. Yes, yeah, absolutely. But also something I've come to understand connecting with, you know, people I consider to be very wise and stuff is that like the problems people have in relationships, they don't understand why they have, you know, like there's a reason people... There's so much drama around relationships and it's not because people are just assholes to each other. It's because they have so many fears and um, stuff from, uh, from, from the um, childhood and, and they don't understand what's going on when it's going. They can't identify that uh, because it's so intimate in a romantic relationship uh, th that it reminds you of things when you were a kid. It's just not that you're aware like, oh, th this is what happened with my dad or oh, this is what happened with my mom or whatever, you know. Um, but but people people don't do that work. They don't they don't understand all these things. That how they behave in romantic relationships has a lot to do with how they yeah it, where their earliest relationships look like. And so that's also the thing. It's not only that people lack values. It's that they lack awareness. And so a lot of people they just end up hurting each other and going separate ways after a while, or or keeping this dysfunctional relationship going. And that's not good either. So yeah. Joe Mad, Hannah, yes, so true. Fallen state meets fallen state. Relationship born in hell. Oh, well, yeah, absolutely. All this is about the gender is exposed in the rational male. Another plug moving on. Yeah, I've got to say, you've got me a little interested in it for sure. And I was saying, yes, very true. We all get triggered, attachment styles, etc. Totally true. Yep, I've learned that the tough way myself. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, but the beautiful thing is, is like with all in like the, the most difficult things, the toughest things, um, the facing it, not running from it, um, dealing with the problem head on. That's how you grow. So all, that's the cool thing with relationships, like whether they work out or not going through those kind of things. If, if you view it, find a right way to view it and analyze it and um, process it, you can learn so much. Well, about you, but then about the world, but you, as we know. All true knowledge starts with the knowledge of the self. 
Jomad. Theo, you got the family cottage all year long? Family cottage? Uh, what, what do you mean? Uh, Joe Matt, my parents have one, but it's summer only. Ah, okay. Really wish I could go spend a week in the woods right now. Um, like, we, we have that place on Gotland. Um, but you mean this the place I drive past it in, or what? With the, I did the drive past. Like, there I can go all year round. Um, yeah, Gotland, well, I technically could, but it's much further away. Um, no, so I could go there for sure. It's just that it's a kind of a project to get there still. Um yeah, I mean, I could go out there. Maybe I will. I, I, something I want to. I've asked to. Can I? Can you please let me come and chop wood for you? I want to chop wood. Uh, that was my instinct. I've been wanting to chop wood since I had my first panic attack because I just intrinsically felt that was what I wanted to do, like just doing some kind of physical work. And it seems like such a nice, just <clears throat> like <clears throat> just cutting them in half like that. I love it. So... But like, what is it called? The little thing that you put the wood on to chop it has broken there and they need to get a new one or something. So I'm doing all I can to, uh, all I can to get to chop wood for my family. Um, Joe, uh, uh, Hanna Wallsten. Hanna Wallsten there. But it seems like it's standard to date many people at a time, for example. So crazy to me. Yeah, that, that's the thing. If I date someone which, you know, I'm very, very picky with that. But th then that's something I would make clear from the start. If it, like, if I uh, would see that we would go on with this, you know, I would say, just so you know, we date one person at a time or we don't date at all. And, you know, you could try to fool me behind my back, but I'll find out and you'll never get me. Absolutely not. That's absolute proof that we're not right for each other. And I never accept that. But so many people do. Yeah, it's horrible. Uh, people I know, dude, like when they talk about it, I'm like, how can you look yourself in the mirror and not hate yourself? Well, probably they do, you know, but just have some kind of ego denial built up about that. But it's horrible uh, treatment of other people to do it that way. Marvin Brown, I am playing around with fasting and bodybuilding. Do you have something like a standard routine when it comes to fasting? Uh, can you elaborate on that? Because you say fasting and bodybuilding. Uh, so... The, you mean for fasting and bodybuilding. I actually have a video called Snake Diet Bodybuilding that you should watch where I go through how I think about fasting and bodybuilding um, overall. I think at a certain point, it's very hard to keep putting on mus muscle while doing too frequent prolonged fasts. Um, you can do the intermittent fasting, of course, but too frequent prolonged fasts at a certain point, I think... Uh, it's not enough of anabolism for your body to build the muscle. So I kind of like to, like I do now, take periods roughly, roughly three months of training and just doing intermittent fasting, maybe some kind of spontaneous fast once during that period. I'm thinking about one next week. We'll see. I'll update you on that. Um, and then take a period when you're maintain because it's easy to not lose muscle and maintain what you have when doing much fasting. It's just kind of hard to build at a certain point. So I like that you just do the intermittent fasting for a while when you want to put on the muscle, and then you can have maintenance or cutting periods when you do it more. And you could do that in many different ways, but I like to then do it like, 48 to 72 hour fast at the end of the week, like the weekly fast. Uh, the place you went for the fast, yes, uh, Joe Mad says, yes. Um, yeah, I do have uh, access to that. Like my dad and brother was actually there this week and I would have uh, followed them if uh, if I wasn't working. So, um, the, uh, lol, Theo, that's amazing. I wanted to chop wood too or mow lawns. Just return to nature and simple living like God intended. Yes, the, 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 I knew it. I knew it when I had my first panic attack. You know, it was thoughts I've been having before that um, I, I felt like I was unlucky to be born in this modern world where you don't have to do fucking anything. Like all the essential things are taken care of. And you then, then you just end up this little skinny, fat, uh, anxious, loser uh, kind of person, you know. Um, so so I, I kind of, it sounds ungrateful. Maybe it was. Uh, but uh, I kind of wish, could I have been born during a war or something? So I didn't have time for all these abstract words like, why do I exist? Why do I feel this way? Why are things like this? You know, you don't have fucking time for that if you wake up to gunshots, you know? So of course I wouldn't want to live in a war. That's an extreme example, but you see what I'm saying. And so I knew intrinsically, I need to do more physical things. 
And I started running right away after my first panic attack um, for every other day or so before I started the weight training. And it's proven to be the right way to go. Absolutely. Marvin Brown says true, but I'm not sure to what. Joe Mad, the problem is women and most men cannot handle the real brutal truth at the core of every issue. So I can never be my true self, but that's life in modern society. Working on isolating my public and private persona sort of messed up. Um, you have a look, bro. You you don't have to live that way. That you're living in fear now. Uh, you're gonna notice. I thought the way you did. Well, if I expose who I really am, what I really think, uh, people are gonna blah, 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 blah. But but it's more likely to happen when you have that fear-based mindset. Fear is the enemy of truth. Fear is the enemy, the biggest enemy. Um, I've come to notice now that I say somewhat, you know politically non-politically correct stuff like all the time in situations where i wouldn't dare to before and, and it's very rare that someone gets like actually upset at me because they can tell i'm talking so naturally i don't want to change their mind i'm not angry that i don't i just call it like i see it and some people they won't agree with you but it won't be so hellish like you think joe so um, uh, i'm saying don't don't go out of your comfort zone you're gonna notice that um, it's not other people's opinion about you are not dangerous. And when you approach it that way, attract, don't chase again. Um, like no one, almost no one is going to have a, a bad opinion of you, I promise. Theo, you ever heard of NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming? Yes, of course I have. It's used in the pickup artist community. It involves some deep truths about human psychology, really deep stuff. Yeah, I mean, look, many times if you start thinking of a song, for instance, like, and like I haven't thought about it, like, why am I thinking of this song? Most likely someone walked past like humming on that song or something like that, or uh, you saw something else uh, that you've seen before as you heard this song or something like this. And so many times our thoughts, that, that's again, you don't create your thoughts. Your thoughts are not your own. So we, we are less in control of what's going on in here than we like to think. So of course you can, the way you phrase things, you can, it's with selling too. You, you don't talk about if you want to do this. It's like when you do this, when you uh, use this product, you're going to feel this way, you know, all this kind of thing. Uh, and of course, I think there's very much nuance to that. Like some people, you can't just trick with uh, not, uh, using the right words, you know. Uh, but what some people are more like open to suggestion and, and being led in that way. Um, yeah, I hear you, Theo. You got a solid foundation. My foundation is to flames here right now. Lol. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Okay, lol. Of course. Nice. Yeah. No, yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, you're well on your way. Uh, I mean, and I, yeah, I'm, I'm the guy, you know, uh, to come to on this channel, but I have to work with, like, not uh, maybe uh, especially, uh, specifically expressing my opinions and just being myself in, in most situations in life, but all these things I'm talking about to you, they are to myself too. Like the video I put out this uh, week uh, about, what did I call it? Why you deserve to be fat and unhappy. You know, it's a message to me too. Some things that I want in life that I'm like, why don't I have it? Like, uh, I have to face the fact that I am responsible for that. I don't have it because I don't deserve it because I'm not the person that has those things yet. And do I want those things? I have to become that person. Um, yeah, so what I'm saying is like, I may be further ahead in some areas, but all of this advice, I'm not perfect. I'm not God, you know? Uh, so it's all goes for me too, but I, I appreciate it. Uh, and I appreciate being able to point you in the right direction. Alan Blair, what is your nutrition and fasting like? Well, I eat food and sometimes I don't. Like, I, come on, man, be more specific. What is your nutrition and fasting like? I eat the breakfast, you know, I eat my Greek yogurt and kefir with protein powder and honey uh, and some supplements in there like creatine. And I eat my raw liver with that and I eat my eggs and I drink the juice. I eat the carrot. <laughs> I eat the rice cookies. Then most, most days I eat rice and beef for two me more meals. And then sometimes I add a final meal that maybe some salmon, some more eggs, some uh, juice, something like that. That's what I eat. I, I eat like three to four meals in a six to 12 eating um, window, uh, six to 12 hour eating window uh, on most days. Um, when I train more, when I fast more, maybe it's more like two meals. Um, uh, 
I, I fast. <laughs> I do the intermittent fasting, as you heard. I sometimes do prolonged fasting. I want, I hope to get in a longer fast of like five, six days before the end of this year, but it might be tough with just how much is going on in life. Um, but I also like the 48 to 72 hour fast at the end of the week, uh, something like that, to, to very generally uh, answer your very general question. Joma, the thing about the eye movements in NLP is cre crazy, betrays the psyche. NLP plus propaganda plus knowledge of history plus reading mainstream news equals nightmare. Tough love. The only true form is love. Appreciate you. Yeah, I appreciate you too, bro. Yeah, but all you're saying there, yeah. Uh, like, poor people, they think they uh, come up with so many things on their own, but... Um, they, they it, it, everything has been paved to end up at the conclusions they've drawn, you know. Uh, Marvin Brown, what is your opinion on keto carnivore? Not a huge fan, especially of keto. I think carnivore is the best elimination diet. If you have a wrecked gut and lots of autoimmune sy um, systems, autoimmune um, issues, uh, it's a good elimination diet, but the goal should always be when you've healed your guts or whatever to slowly add back some fruit and maybe a few vegetables, you know. Um, yeah, but I, I, I've talked about this earlier on this stream that I don't think zero or very low carb long term is appropriate for anyone. And it's always a little because this is what I have to say to the people that are into all the health diet stuff. Um, but, but most people, just everyday people out there, they, most of them would need to eat lower carbs, probably. I, I, I believe in low to moderate carb for most people, for a, for a high-performing people like myself, actually high carb. And so, yeah, the carnivore, great elimination diet, keto, good intervention for weight loss uh, uh, temporarily, but carbs should be added back at some point. Yeah. Um, Alan Blair, did you eat your wheatis? Lol, wheatis, what is that? Wheatis. Wheat this. I keep saying it just so it's not too much dead air. Cereal. <laughs> no, that, that's something I'm very happy about. I've never been into cereal. I never liked cereal. So um, uh, I've been spared from that. You know, it, it, it's um, when, when I think back to what I used to eat as a kid, like I used to think I ate so horribly because I, oh, I didn't eat my greens. <laughs> but it turns out that eating your greens isn't all that important. Like certain greens can be good. But um my breakfast, for instance, it was pretty decent. It was like um, um, sourdough bread with liver paste. So it's actually liver, but it's just, it's processed some other junk in there. Uh, and a glass of milk and a glass of juice. That was like my breakfast as a kid. It's pretty decent breakfast. Like I'd prefer something else than the bread than, you know, yeah, optimally the, the actual liver. But when you think about someone being completely unaware of what's good nutrition, uh, eating that, it's actually pretty decent food. Joma, do you, are you concerned with growing the channel or you're okay as is and letting it proceed organically? Like I know you're from JLP. I see you've done columns with health fitness people. Yeah, um, mm, yeah, I want to grow it, but I want to grow it slow and steadily. Um, of course, because I go for uh, quality over quantity always. Like, look at this, like a little channel with just 2,000 subscribers and I've been able to get a decent amount of online clients, online coaching clients, just because I'm so niched. Like both people that just like my personality, my values, my arguments and reasonings about the world, um, but also I'm into kind of uh, unusual combos, like, you know, building muscle and doing prolonged fasting. It's not that common. So uh, the answer is, of course, I wanted to grow because there's more people that could be interested in this, but I'm not looking to get as big as possible, if you see what I'm saying. Like, I don't think this would ever be a 1 million subscriber channel, but I think in time it could be a 100,000 subscriber channel. So I absolutely want to... Um, uh, want to grow it uh, uh, and yeah uh, it's just it's so much work you know to to set up um, like what it, it, it keeps growing as long as I just put out stuff but to speed it up I would have to do more collabs like that I would have to try to get Jesse Lee's attention because I'm pretty sure that in the right circumstances if I got his attention like he knows me he liked me and talked to me if he would be a reminder of who I am and like I got to ask the question under the right circumstances or the right person recommended me at the right time or something like that. I think something like that could be set up. And that would, of course, like pfft, boost. I, I remember just showing up to his show and getting to mention the name. I got a few hundred subscribers from that. So, 
yeah, the, uh, I'm thinking of starting a podcast too. I have some very interesting guests. Um, probably Martina Johansson that we mentioned will go on. I have some other interesting people that would go on. Uh, unfortunately, uh, as of right now, most are um, Swedish speaking, and I could do that too, of course. But um, since it's so niche, this channel, that's also why I choose to not do it in Swedish, so I can reach all of you little uncommon sense people all over the world. But then that's a little talk about what I think about growing the channel and stuff. Marvin Brown, thank you. To me, you are like a million sub YouTuber. Oh, I appreciate that. that that's a very sweet comment, man. Uh, very nice. Twilight, love the values. Um, you mean my values? Yeah, well, appreciate that. You know, wait, this is American breakfast cereal. Yeah, I got you. This fits within your business model. Mad respect. Yeah, yeah Joe Mad asked about the channel and says that. Twilight, you are too raw. People hate the raw truth. Well, the people who love the truth love it. So I don't care about, you know, little ego people that can't see it. You know, I wish them well. I wish they find their way here um, in the end, but you know, I know most people won't, but I'm not trying to get popular here. I'm trying to reach those who can be reached with the truth because I don't care about anything else. I love the truth above all, I, and I actually do. Joe Mad, Lin Yan Chin should recommend you to Jesse's crew. Yes, true. Ah, he commented on, um, on a video recently, like a short I put out on Friday, I think. Um, he commented on it and something about my eyes, uh, no homo comment, he said. But yeah, maybe I should ask him, like, um, comment again on his comment, like, bro, will you recommend me to Jesse? Can you get me on Jesse, bro? Lin Yan Shin, that guy. Joe Mad, what do you think about that guy? He's very special. Like, he, he does drop some pretty intense truth bombs, but he also talks so much. He has so much to say about it all. And he's a little anonymous guy, you know. So, um, yeah, you know, I always get a little suspicious when someone has so much to say and they're all anonymous. Like, I guess I'm talking a bit about you too, Joe. But uh, you you, uh, you admit your own um, shortcomings here and there. And so that makes it different. Lin Yan Shin is just, I don't know, a very special guy. But I, I guess I like him, though. Uh, but... And Twilight says they would rather be lied to. Yeah, most people would rather be believe into the lie. Um, yeah, and, and many of us do. Even I, I, I've never been a conformist. I've many times been able to see something that, like the rest of the group, can't. But I was also deceived by a lot of lies. So you know, I had sympathy for those people too. I wish them well, but I know that I can't just force them to see the truth. They have to take the first step. First, you know, I can lead a horse to the water, but they have to drink it on their own. Joe Mad, one in thousand will receive the truth. Yada, yada. Absolutely. That guy is famous. And I just found out he black. He black. Lin Yan Chin. I, yeah, I think, I think he said in a comment to me that he's half black and half Asian. Joe, so I like him more now. That probably makes me racist. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> yeah, he's a wordsmith. Yeah, absolutely. Big Game James, what's up? Amazing, amazing. Twilight, have you ever heard of Simland? He is into fasting, biohacking, heavy training. He's in mid twenties and he's from Estonia. Yes, I ha have heard about Simland. Um, I, I, I'm, I watch his Instagram more than his YouTube videos. I've talked about him before. That he's like, I do really lo look up to the guy. Like he, he's an amazing uh, human being, but. To me, his way of presenting things is just a little boring. And I think he's aware too, because he puts in a, a lot of memes and stuff in his videos. Um, but I love his information, of course, and he's uh, admirable, like uh, the way he lives his life and stuff. He, he, it's just not my, you know, it's always like this. Um, some people wouldn't like my way of communicating things uh, either, but maybe, we're still in a kind of the same boat with what we do, you know, and, and that's fine. You know, we all have preferences. Simland for me is um, a little bit boring, but of course I do um, think he's an amazing human and I do like watching his Instagram because then I can also kind of, you know, choose the pace on the story myself and not listen only to this when autophagy is activated and, you know, all that talk. Okay. Yes, we've gone over an hour, but we have a few people left. I mean, if you have some more questions I have, uh, can be available for a little bit more. I'd be happy to keep it going for a little bit. Otherwise, we're going to start rounding it off soon. 
So you people that jumped in late here, I mean, it says 10 people. And I know now that the number is always too low because it said zero while like three people are writing in the chat. Um, so yeah, yeah, Gwilym Evans. I do. Hold up. Okay. We, we stay here for you, Gwilym. Uh, what does your what does your little image say there? It's not good when with the small things when you have like blurry text as your um, avatar. I can't tell. Big Game James, you dropped in. You said amazing, but do you have any question or any topic you'd like me to hear? Um, you'd like me to hear about, <laughs> uh, talk about? Okay, Gwilym, I'm I'm trying to keep them. Oh, they're good. Twilight, what are your thoughts on raw meat diet? Um, I think I got asked it recently. I don't see the point. Why? You know, like eating some raw meat, I don't mind. If it's from a good source, uh, you know, it shouldn't be an issue. I eat. I, I said last time I was asked that um, I ate raw meat just out of convenience because I didn't have time to cook it. I don't really see the point, to be honest. Maybe if you have a super sensitive gut that needs healing, maybe it would be even better to start out with not only carnivore, but raw carnivore. But I don't see any point to doing that long term. And, you know, human beings have been able to cook food for so long with a fire and stuff. So I think we're adapted to it. And I don't because that could be an argument like it's more natural. But um, I think we've been cooking food for uh, very long. And um, yeah, I don't really see the point. <laughs> William Evans says, ha, that's exactly what I was going to ask. Yeah, well, there you go. Uh, yeah, I eat raw liver, but it's mostly because it's easier to eat raw. Like it kind of is like, goes down like that. I don't like it cooked. My coach, um, at Free The Frame on Instagram, David, my buddy too, he has a YouTube channel, Free The Frame also. So you can look that up. But um, he actually likes liver. And I've been able to tell that he's not just playing tough guy. He actually likes it. So kind of envious of him. I, I needed to uh, be raw or, or cooked in some kind of nice stew or whatever. Um, uh, oi. Have you heard of Ajunus Wonderplanets? Ajunus Wonder. It, it seems familiar in some way. Let me look that name up. You know, I'll have to work on so I can do some screen sharing and we can like watch clips together on the stream and stuff sometimes. That would be cool. Like right now I can, of course, read, uh, look up things and read about them. Hey, the wrong thing was copied. Uh, la la la. Nice, I see you're filling up the chat with some stuff so we can go a little bit more. Um, okay, who is this guy? Is that the guy who like says he cured... Um, autism with the diet is that the guy uh let me search here uh borderline autistic uh no it doesn't say anything about it there but uh, go on fill me in um joe mad theo do you like a media phone detox like unplugging i visit sites compulsively getting better at not doing it but it lessens the quality of my day so much it's crazy your experience is what you focus on yeah yeah, uh, like, I would like that. I've actually thought about it for myself just to try. It's it's so difficult when, you know, I could be without the YouTube and stuff for a week, you know, just go through having a little more boring, you know, but that you need a fucking phone for so much work shit. I'm an online coach. If I want to do uh, like a, a one week detox, what, should I just be like, okay, you're all on your own now for a week. You're like, I, I guess I would have to tell them way before, way ahead then. But even me, I'd like to do it. But yeah, that's so dangerous, Joe. Like that's that's the way I used to live. You know, I go up, I go in. I, I was a member in a, a very extreme feminist Facebook group uh, and I was just spying there, you know, uh, and I just sat and raged on all the shit I read, you know. I was addicted to getting upset at uh, things like that. It's, you know, many things we don't think about it as addictions because you don't necessarily feel like, ah, what a good feeling, but something you want to do this, you want to sit there and, ah, this is, ah, this is wrong, like, you know. So, yeah, that's horrible. Um yeah, the news end up becoming a reality. And you can see it's so interesting. I didn't see the connection before, but like the alt-right and the super politically correct people, they're kind of just mirror images. They're, they're reacting to other different things, but it's the same thing. 
they get so upset about all the things they follow and they want how, how, how can you see this this is crazy la 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 i want to argue about this with everyone very dangerous so i think you should do that Big Game James, what do you think about moderate sunbathing? Awesome. The sun is fucking awesome, and it's ridiculous that it's being spouted that it wouldn't be. It's very important for circadian rhythms, for testosterone production, for so many things. So, yeah. Like, of course, don't get a... If you are in the sun so long that you get burned, yeah, then it's too much, you know. Getting burned is not good. That's a permanent cell damage. But, moderate, like, sun exposure, as long as you don't get burnt, is just good. So... Uh, oh, Twilight. Snake Diet introduced me into that because he was eating pounds of raw meat for better digestion. If you eat a lot of cooked protein, you get pretty sleepy. Yeah, you know that if you eat, if you were going to eat a huge amount, yeah, maybe. Uh, <laughs> Hannah Wallstein, in Sweden, it's moderate sunbathing by default. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. Like, I, I, when I went, I, I've been out like a whole day this summer, with, with, at the start of the summer, and I never got burnt. And uh, I've come to realize that has to do with your diet, too. If you have a shit diet, you're more, more sensitive to the sun. But yeah, here in Sweden, sun doesn't really get that strong. In fact, now, at this point, you can't even get vitamin D from the sun anymore. So you kind of you can still get some benefits from getting just light, you know, but um, vitamin D you kind of have to supplement with here. And Willem Evans says about that Ionus guy. He was a big advocate of raw meat and raw fat. Check him out. Yeah, I'll look more later. Uh, he has some pretty crazy claims. He cured, uh, and Twilight fills in, he cured himself out of cancer and autism. Hmm. Interesting. You know, my brother is very autistic, and I wish I got to intervene some with a diet and stuff. I don't think his condition can be completely fixed, but I know it could be improved. But um, it's difficult for me to get to know, uh, get to be involved uh, like that with my parents, you know. Joe Mad, I didn't have a smartphone for two months a few years back. It was incredible, and I took it for granted. You get used to it so quick. Yeah, I can I can see just being away from the smartphone and stuff for a week. I think you'd be fine with it, and we would feel like, uh-huh, am I using this now again? Hmm. You know? Um, William Evans, it's an interesting book called Ionus van der Planets, We Want to Live. Hmm. Joe Mad, haha, feminist beta. Kidding, man. <laughs> no. Yeah, but I was in the feminist group as a spy, you know, like it's still not, a, it's still kind of beta, you know, uh, but it was no point in trying to argue because it was one of those groups. Like you're, you go against the, you, you can only um, argue within the feminism, you know, but if you go against it, you're out like that. I actually got kicked out from that group without even interacting in it because I guess their moderators and admins went through the members and go, go, they went and checked up, maybe saw me share something that they didn't like. And I was banned from the group without ever interacting with anyone. And it was like 15,000 members. So they really had to scan everyone. Um, William Evans. Yeah, going down the uh, redacted telegram rabbit hole is toxic. Absolutely. What about sun cream? You mean sunscreen? Uh, yeah, probably most of those are what's actually giving you cancer. So much in life now. Yeah, don't do the healthy thing. Take this um, made up shit. That's the healthy thing. That, that's like, <laughs> it's in relation to this, you know, the dangerous illness thing, you know. Um, so little focus on, yeah, um, keep, keep your <laughs> insulin sensitivity high. Keep your d diet clean. Uh, exercise. G get sunlight. You know, all these things. No, no, none of that. The, the way to health is to do this. This is health. This is health, you know. <sighs> Joe Matt, yes, it's all a reaction. Everything in the news is designed to make you overreact, all lies. Anyways, yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Even those people who think they see the truth and see it through it, like you're supposed to be afraid in one way or another. And, and some believe into the lie and they're afraid of it. And some see that it's a lie and they're afraid for that reason, you know. Well, I heard it's full of rubbish. Yeah, I think so. I absolutely think so. Like, we'd have built-in sunscreen already. God would have given it to us if we needed it, you know? And then, of course, I, I can see, uh, like, if you use the right kind, probably some kind of oil that isn't too bad, and you're going to be out for a very long time where the sun is super hot, then yes, sure. But all these Nivea Factor 50 shit must be cancerous, car carcinogenic as fuck. 
Twilight. Imagine that there are six-year-old kids in school that are already addicted to scrolling. Yeah, I think, you know, I talk about it. I don't want to say too much about parenting when I'm not a parent myself, because I know it's easy to just sit here on the side and be like, you should do it like this. But some things, I feel like you're fucking setting your kid up to be miserable when you expose them to candy and iPads and iPhones from such an early age. They'll be, they'll be, <laughs> how are you going to be able to, like I saw the, outside my house here, I saw the most saddest thing once, like, um, like, like uh, I don't remember the whole site now, but I could just tell that the, the younger kid got to watch the iPad and the older kid was just screaming, screaming, because they couldn't get to. And it was so awful, you know. I was thinking my generation was too cuddled and we had too much comfort and we played too much video games. But we didn't have the fucking iPhones since age, you know, three. Uh, we, we actually went out and played some, at least. We did more sports in school and stuff. It's just getting worse and worse. Terrible. Joe Matt. Okay, I was a hardcore Marxist Leninist 15 years ago before I saw the value in traditional systems. So you win, bro. Banned for being too alpha, my man. Yeah. The funny thing, I'm the other way around. I always uh, view myself as uh, very right-wing, but mainly like libertarian, which I now think is fucking terrible. And I, at this point, I don't, I don't identify with left or right because I've come to realize, you know, a lot of, to make very simplistic uh, analysis here, but people on, on the left, they hate corporations and what they do, you know, but they're fine with the state doing all these things. And on the right, it's not under, oh, they want, they hate the state. But uh, if it's a corporation that uh, does this to you, then it's fine, you know. And I, I'm just, yeah, I, I don't like oppressive regimes, whether they're formed out of a government or, uh, you know, corporations. I don't uh, mind the word use there, you know. Uh, yeah, so I really don't feel, I, I'm kind of anti-authoritarian, you know, like... Yeah, I believe in freedom, but I also, you, you know, what I'd like is kind of a libertarian society in in the sense that they don't have to make everything illegal and stuff. But they could have they could have the legal weed, for instance. But um, the the value of the society is not like it's not you don't get pushed or uh, encouraged to smoke the weed, for instance. Now, just like one example, I, I think people should get to choose, but they should get properly educated about things that, that, that would be good but, yeah um margie brasil butaitis butaiti I, I don't know how to uh, uh express uh <laughs> pronounce that but what's up you put a little like kitty looking out from a box that's nice um Twilight, our ancestors would use shea butter, bone marrow, coconut oil, all of it. Well, yeah, right. Th those are things I could see someone doing if they had to be out for a long time in the sun where it's, well, well not in Sweden, you know. Joe Matt, I'm going into the Amish community to meet my wife. <laughs> then we're moving to a log cabin in the woods. Sounds awesome, bro. I wish you luck. Twilight. Kids have very plastic brain. Imagine frying dopamine receptors at such a young age. Addiction and depression rates are going to be through the roof. Yeah, look, I just know playing Diablo 2, you know, like, like I won't go into how, but my mother did not approach this the right way. They, like they gave me all these video games, so I got addicted to them, and then they yelled at me for playing them too much, you know. It was their fault, uh, but... Um, I remember when Diablo 2, my mom just put it away. She locked the computer room, you know. And I remember I felt like depressed. I felt like uh, I had like uh, withdrawals. Like I did not know what to do with myself. I don't, don't get to play. And I was allowed to play if it rained during the summer. And I remember when the rain came, when I was outside, I was like, yes, yes. Yes, I get to play Diablo 2 again. <laughs> so, yes, just me. I know what like some video games uh, did to me, just imagine being exposed to, to this fucking screen at an even younger age, you know. Francisco Leon, what's up, man? Hi, bro. I've been having lots of problems trying to sleep. It's like someone is watching and I get afraid. I also believe in God and I pray a bit still, but still difficult for me to sleep. Okay, man. Um, that's unusual. Like, it sounds like you almost get, like, sleep paralysis or something. Um... Maybe you should go do a sleep study or something. But um, 
Yeah, I, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, like, like the normal stuff, get sunlight throughout the day, exercise, have a good diet, don't eat too close to bed, and, and maybe pray, uh, as you say, to kind of calm you down, uh, observe your thoughts and emotions. With what you gave me there, that's like all I can give you. Um, hope it gets better, man. Joe Matt, I feel today like the left-right dichotomy is an illusion to maintain the existing order, etc. etc. Good for you, Theo. I completely agree. It's uh, I, I've understood so many things with racism and um, uh, feminism and the right and left. They, people in power want us to be divided. Have, have you seen? Have you seen that picture? Like like it's. Um, it's like a king who stands with his like advisor or whatever up on the wall in the castle. And there's a lot of people with torches and like uh, forks, pinch forks or whatever they're called. And, and uh, like and the king is like, what do I do? And the advisor is like, easy. You just convince the people with torches that the people with a pinch, whatever they're called, forks, want to take them away and tell the, other, the opposite. And they'll start fighting each other instead. I feel that's what they do, you know. Distract us with these um, fake divisions. And we fall into the trap if we start identifying, yes, I am right wing, or yes, I am a feminist, or no, I hate feminists, I'm anti feminist, or whatever, you know. Um, you, you play into the game, you know. Uh, you get fooled, and um, yeah, you can't see the real enemy. Margie Brasil Butaiti. <laughs> like beautiful. Be you tight is just peeking in. What, what, what I love your stuff, thank you. But what do you even say there? Like beautiful, be you tight is just peeking in. Oh, some funny smiley. Um, uh, I, I don't know. I, I'm I'm trying to get this to mean that I am beautiful. I'll take it that you say I'm beautiful and tight looking, and you want to peek in and see me, and you love your love my stuff. Thank you for for acknowledging all of those things, Joe Matt. You know, I have an actual real question for you, not just right-wing ranting. Uh, okay, cool. Any tips for regulating sleep schedule? Right now, I'm like 1 a.m. to 9 a.m.-ish. It's a mess, but I'm just a couple of hours off from being normal. No isms. Yeah, I agree. Uh, no ism song. Uh, no kind of ism. 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 Well, Joe, uh, the best thing to do there is... Um, I think probably it is to just put your alarm clock earlier, go up, um, get sleep deprived, um, so you get uh, sleepy sooner, uh, try to go to bed earlier, you know. Uh, I, I think it's usually, it, it's hard, uh, me, uh, sleep is not super easy for me, and I struggle in uh, those situations, and I feel like it's mostly like when I am in a sleep deficit, so I can use that to my advantage, I get tired, um, sleepy earlier, then I go to bed earlier, I will wake up earlier, and so do it that way, kind of, you know, uh, Twilight. I went through the same when I was addicted to Counter-Strike. Yeah, Counter-Strike was also a, an addiction of mine, for sure. Uh and Margie Brasil Butaiti. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm trying to pronounce that name. Ha ha ha, pitchforks and torches. You have interesting smileys that you use there. Joe Matt, except for Allahu Akbar is <laughs> because it's too funny. Twilight Counter Strike is a cruel mistress. Yeah. Margie Brasil Butaiti. Sounds like rice with, and yes, you're also beautiful. Sounds like rhymes with. Mm -hmm. and yeah, thank you for calling me beautiful, actually, and not just me uh, putting that in your mouth. <laughs> Francisco Leon, thanks, bro. I can't, I can't be sure, but maybe demons, maybe they watch me, or I don't know. It's just become difficult for me to sleep. No, look, bro, like, hmm, demons. I, I'm, uh, I don't want to say that demons don't exist at all or anything, but I think demons are mostly within you. You know, they are not outside you. Um, hmm. They watch you, you know. No, no, no. This, this is something. You, you're. You, I feel like you've, like, uh, you've, you, you've noticed something lying there, and you've made up this kind of story in your head. Um, I think you. I think you should lie there uh, and uh, just do the kind of silent prayer, meditating thing, and uh, observe, observe what you're thinking and feeling about the whole thing, and know. There's no fucking demon that's going to jump out and take you. I promise you. You have my word on that. So if you can just uh, 
get out. You, you know, you're in that. You're living in that right now. If you can just stand outside it and see it for what it is. Oh, it's just my fear. It's just my thoughts playing a trick on me. Big game, James. Do you go skiing in the winter? Great fitness. Unfortunately, not these days, but I have a lot with my family up until I was like um, 20, maybe. Have not gone since then. We might go on a trip with my family and some other families uh, next year. Um, yeah, I, I've been snowboarding mostly. I'm actually quite good at snowboarding. Not, not so much doing the tricks anymore. I got too scared from hurting myself too much, but I'm pretty good at just, you know, going down the slopes on the snowboard. I really love, I wish I was better at the skis these days because it's just more convenient, practical. But w when you go on the snowboard, it's good. But, you know, all the fucking lifts and transport, uh, you know, yeah, when you when it's nice to be able to do this instead of, um, you know, I can show you and I don't, I've never talked about this in English, but yeah, uh, I, I do enjoy it. I hope we go next year. Twilight. Blue light blocking glasses have changed my life. I don't ever have any sleep problems since I got them. Yeah, we've been talking about this. I forget to order them. I, I need to. Should write write a note here. Uh, thank you for the reminder, Twilight. Uh, 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 where do we have it? Yes, there we go. Blue light glasses. And I'll put down the rational mail for you too, Joe Mad. So I, maybe I have something to say about it in a while. Um, Joe, man, thanks to you. Part of the issue is all external demands on my time have been eliminated because of the global bullshit. So I have to impose structure on myself. But yes, that is pure weakness. Thank you for the input. And he agrees that Francisco needs the silent prayer. Yes, yes. Uh, um, yeah, man, like... like <clears throat> I know it's, it's a lot of boredom and you just want to keep being stimulated in some way. But um, what uh, many things for me uh, was that I, instead of doing it in the evening, I was like, nah, I'll just go up early and do it tomorrow instead. And it's very nice when you get into that habit. I've been in that cycle of just staying up too much, doing bullshit things on the internet. Uh, and it's easy out of boredom. But yeah, the, the, the advice I give you still stands. And yeah, maybe you'll have to you always have when you have to change things. Be a little forceful at the start before it gets natural to you. Uh, beauty tis. <laughs> uh, Margie Brazil, beauty tis. Beauty tis. Is that okay? Beauty tis. Beauty tis. But that can't be the right. It sounds like it's like a French name. Petati or something. Um. Francesco Leon, such a great answer on the demon stuff. Thanks. God bless you, bro. I'm happy that landed well with you, man. Twilight, I ordered two pairs from Blue Box. They come from Australia. Transparent ones for PC and orange ones that I wear after dark. Cool. Blue Box. Put that down to maybe I won't order exactly those, but it doesn't hurt. Put down. Blue Box. Um... Francisco Leon, Joe Matt, what is the silent prayer? I can tell you, Francisco, it's uh, Jesse Lee Peterson. I actually have it up in a tab here. Uh, it, it's kind of a, you can, it's a silent prayer, literally, but it's kind of a meditation thing where the, it's 15 minutes and the purpose is to observe your thoughts and learn to, so many people, they live right in the middle of their thoughts and feelings and they can't distinguish what's true. And when you were able to watch them from the outside, you watch your thoughts just like you watch a movie. Like if you put on a movie here and I sit you down there, you know, you don't get to choose if it's a scary or funny scene. It just happens. Well, it's the same thing with your thoughts. Uh, but most people, they, they think they are real and they get too into them, like you've done with the demons here. And you'll be able to tell the difference between... Uh, what's actually true and what is just your mind playing tricks on you. So I would, there is a version here on YouTube, but I would suggest you Google Jesse Lee Peterson silent prayer. And there is a version on SoundCloud that's um, my favorite. Uh, I, these days, I don't even really listen to it myself because I can do it without the tape because I've gotten the point of it, but I do it extensively, especially when I have those uh, intrusive thoughts and tough thoughts and feelings because that's the only way to get on top of them just like your apartment you can just hide shit away for so long until you know you it's just oh it's a mess uh, same thing you can just bottle thoughts and feelings up for so long if you don't confront them and learn them uh, you will explode too 
Yeah, because your home explodes if you don't clean it. Like, not the perfect analogy, but um, you see what I'm saying. Uh, Twilight, you put them on after sunset, and once you lay in the bed, it takes three to five minutes, and you put, pass out. Hmm. Cool. <laughs> Marjorie Brazil, how was it? Beautiety. Beautiety. That, that was how it was, right? Uh, where, where do you have the spelling? Yeah, beautiety. Yeah, okay. Now I know it. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, for Francesco, yes, it will help you, man. Yes, absolutely. Margie Brasil Butaiti. I love blue blockers. I wear them every night when I read even a regular book, not on the internet. Very nice. Um, Twilight, that's amazing. Joad, can you hear those blue blockers over your normal glasses? He, uh, where <laughs> do you hear those? Uh, how do you use those glasses? You just wear for a few minutes? No, I, I mean, you have them to block out the light, right? Um, you can order blue blockers with adjusted lenses. That would be awesome. I mean, I have contacts now, but sometimes well, when I don't, you know. Uh, Margie Brazil Butaiti. My blue blockers are readers, so I have a strength of 1.75. You can buy them without the prescription. Yeah, it would be even better if I could get the huge ones. I just put uh, uh, out uh, on the outside of my regular ones. Um, yeah, because I wouldn't uh, wear those outside any way, you know. Um, Twilight, so you can use them as normal glasses. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And Francesco Leon says, great, we'll try about the silent prayer. Well, we went half an hour extra. Um, I'm happy. It's it's funny now. It's always the most people when uh, I want to end the stream, or want to want to. You know, I like it. I, I do like talking to you guys, and I appreciate you for helping me out in the chat. With, well, I have had the top chat activated this whole time. Is this anything I missed from that? Well, I guess I'll know if I rewatch it afterwards. Um, but yeah, thank you for this time, guys. Appreciate you um, helping me out so much in the chat, and um, yeah. Yeah, I have uh, videos coming out this week. Maybe an extra one because I did not kind of impromptu random video. But Wednesdays is the um, official upload day, uh, day, like for now. And we have the Sunday streams. So, uh, yeah, appreciate you too, Twilight. Appreciate you too, Jomad. I appreciate you all, but all of you said it. And Jomad said, seriously, you're doing it. It's quite amazing. Great fellowship. Well, I really appreciate that, bro. And I will think of ways to level this up so we can get a community outside the live chat. A uh, quick, quick thing I'll say before we go, I have an updated Discord link in, in the description if you want to join in there. We have talked a little bit there, not um, got it going very great uh, yet, but I'll think of other ways to create communities because I, I like you guys and I want to talk to you more, not just on the screen. So uh, new rants incoming, absolutely twilight. Theo, Margie Brasil, Butaitis, uh, uh, yeah, that's me. Greetings from Ecuador, greetings, Francisco. Thanks for all your amazing content. Well, you're welcome, Margie Brasil, Butaitis. I have to say the, the, the name every time. Okay, guys, I will see you later. Peace.